Welcome back everyone to the Audacious Money Witch channel where we talk about investing and trading stocks, bonds, and crypto assets around the world. Why TLT is crashing right in front of our eyes and no one is talking about it. Bond yield has been going up nonstop ever since the Fed cutting that 50 basis point. Drunken Miller has called inflation is coming back. But if inflation is coming back, then why is oil price and oil stock, like my oxy stock, or shall I say Warren Buffett's oxy stock, is selling off right now? Maybe it's all connected with the election, which is coming in two days. Why I am not as bullish as before. Actually, I am truly scared a bit. Let me explain. First, I am going to give you his opinion, then I'm going to tell you my own thoughts about it. In a world of fiat money, we are forced to look at different ways of valuing the stock market. If you don't know fiat money, it means money created by banks out of thin air. It's just an IOU. If you value the stock market during the Zimbabwe hyperinflation, for example, you say, oh, it's a bull market. Well, of course, it is because your measuring unit is crashing. However, in real terms, it might not have been a bull market at all. In real terms, it means inflation-adjusted terms. Bob Prechter follows several different ways of measuring what the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index is doing. The one he prefers is the Dow versus PPI. He thinks that is the cleanest. PPI is the producer price index. What's interesting is that we had a very clear five waves up in Dow versus PPI. So you had the first wave up to 1966 and a correction to 82. It was a 60% decline. Then you had a run up to 1999 and then another 60% decline, which ended in 2009. So we're absolutely in the fifth wave up. There are other ways to measure it and that one he likes a lot is measuring the Dow in real money, which is to say gold. If we were still on gold standard, people would know that the Dow is actually lower now than it was in 1929. We had no bull market at all. Dow Jones is cheaper than it was in 1929 by a substantial amount when compared to gold. So all that's happened is that the measuring unit has collapsed in value, which is why Bitcoin has gained so much value in recent years. Because there are only 21 million Bitcoins, a limit hard-coded into its protocol by its creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. As of now, approximately 19 million Bitcoins have been mined, leaving about 2 million Bitcoins left to be mined before the total supply cap is reached. The last Bitcoin is expected to be mined around the year 2140 due to the halving process, which reduces the reward for mining new blocks over time. Around 4 million Bitcoins may have lost due to the private keys being misplaced which also increases the scarcity of Bitcoin. Same thing here for gold. If you had bought gold in 1999, you'd have done better than being in the stock market. Bob Prechter is predicting that the top is already in because of these insane overvaluations. Today's financial mania has been inspired by AI. At 3.3 trillion, the market valuation of one chip maker, NVIDIA, has been bid above the entire stock market of five G7 countries, Germany, Italy, France, the UK, and Canada. Let that sink in for just a second. NVIDIA, a company with less than 30,000 employees, is priced more than all the publicly traded companies in Italy and Germany combined. When the fever breaks and growth is revalued, the entire stock market will be up for adjustment. Value indiscriminate, 
buying has become an international pastime. Global participants have piled record amounts into U.S. equity exchange traded funds in 2024, surpassing even the prior record seen in 2021. It's not just Nvidia stock. Look at Reddit stock. It's new IPO and it's flying high already, up over 200% year to date. If you think that's not enough hype, take a look at Carvana. It's up over 300% year to date. It has a debt to equity ratio of 21 and it's performed better than any AI stock. Bob said the slightest pullback in over the whole system is going to lead to a cascade of people trying to get out of their IOUs. In 2005 to 2007, while stocks and real estate were still up and holding it up, those people got more and more negative. That's been happening for the past two years as well. The small business owners are saying, no, it's tough. It's really bad out there. It's hard out there. It's really rough. And the stock market says, we don't see anything to worry about. Well, that's exactly the position we were in 2007. So Bob thinks we could be very, very close to the top of the market for a long while before we make another new high. I know that 1929 is almost like 100 years ago. They didn't have the internet back then. They don't have AI, obviously. So why does the chart pattern matter to what happens today? Elliott Wave is based on human emotion, the social mood, greed, and fear that hasn't changed forever. So in this standpoint, that's what makes Wave Count a great method to predict stock market trends. My expectation is that probably the S&P 500 may go to 6,000 and Bitcoin may go to 100,000 before we make that final top. And wave five of five of this bull market that started in the 1940s after World War II, as for now, the market looks like it wants to go lower in the short term if we break the September low. Then we are in trouble to make it to 6,000. Tops in October are not very common, but there's one that Bob remembers quite well, which was October 1973. The Dow got back very close to its all-time high from January, and people were calling for new highs. The NASDAQ 100, which topped in July, still hasn't made new highs. You don't get it very often, but when the one time it did happen in October top, the decline was very swift in November, December of that year, and of course led to the big bottom of December 1974. So what's Bob Prechter ultimately predicting, since a lot of people, myself included, are saying S&P 500 could go to 6,000 this year. He warns that when this bull market is finally over, the crash could take the Dow Jones Industrial Average down to 6,000 from today's 42,000. That's an 85% crash for the index. That's scary. That means the world is going to end. Every pension will be lost. He doesn't think it's an if question, but when that will happen. When we get our debt implosion and junk bonds go to zero and many corporations are just going out of business and a lot of stocks are going to go to zero, he said even in dollar terms, we will have a significant history making fall in stock prices. He said for the A wave fall could be last for one year. It might sound like a long time for the stocks to fall, but he is saying it could fall very swift and sharp. Probably like 2020, but not for just one month, but the whole year. I couldn't even imagine that. If that happens, time for some puts. Now for the question unanswered about the election, oil and long bonds. If the economy tanks, if the stock market tanks, then that's not going to be good news for whoever wins the election. But it's their policy to put us into this inflation mess in the first place. If oil price stays low, then we won't have this inflation problem. Then the long bond could go up instead of keeps going lower. 
TLT is back to 90s, that's a warning signal that I think even I have been ignoring right now because of the oil price has lost the correlation with the bond yield at this point. But as soon as the election is over, we will have a clear view on which direction we are heading in terms of inflation crash or recession crash. Maybe one of the most disappointing things about this campaign is the fact that the state of Florida and the current administration is weaponizing tax dollars. They're utilizing $50 million of, of tax dollar, taxpayer money to go against um, this amendment. And when you think about that, right, this is a citizen ballot initiative. There were over a million Floridians who signed a petition to get this on the ballot. And the fact that now their taxpayer dollars are being used to run these PSAs conveniently right before this election, it's really electioneering. Rule that every Bitcoiner knows by heart. Never sell your Bitcoin, right? That's right, isn't it, huh? That's right. How did I figure that one? Never sell your Kamala recognized that this country is at risk, that the economy needs to get stronger, that the cost of food and the cost of living is too high. Damn, it's even high for me! And she told me that in my face. So she better not lie to me in my face. Get a job, save a little, take out a mortgage, buy a house. Get a job, save a little, take out a mortgage, buy a house. Get a job, save a little, take out a mortgage, buy a house. Get a job, save a little, apply for a mortgage, get a second job, get some roommates, rent a house. Have you tried working harder? Have you tried working harder? Realize the only generation that's going to fix this is yours and start building.